Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar. My name is Raymond Law. I'm the technical support engineer of Salvation Data, and I will be your presenter today. So uh, today we're going to talk about DVR forensics. Our topic is retrieve evidentiary video data for videos from damaged or inaccessible CCTV DVRs. <clears throat> I'm really excited to be here and give you guys this presentation today. So in this training, I will share with you some very simple and basic knowledge of DVR forensics and introduce our DVR forensic system, VIP Video Investigation Portable. Uh, if you have any anything that you want to ask, please leave your questions through the webinars council. Um, I will answer your questions when the training is over. And at, at the end of the training, we will give away a lifelong VIP license for free, randomly to one of you guys. Okay, so before we begin, I would like to share with you a very great news. Our special DVR re video extraction and recovery technology just got a patent issued by the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Uh, this technology is embedded in VIP to help you extract as much video data as possible from a DVR hard disk. Okay, now let's get started. First, let's take a look at the content. Field investigation, video data status, DVR data extraction, case study, and video VIP demonstration. So generally today, I'm going to uh, first share with you some basic background knowledge of DVR forensic to help you better understand what I'm going to say later. And then we will see a real DVR forensic case to see how the process goes with the help of our professional forensic system VIP. Chapter one, field investigation. Uh, in this chapter, we will talk about some uh, real important steps and things to keep in mind uh, when you are doing field investigation in a DVR forensic case. So step one, spot CCTV cameras and DVRs. Uh, locate the CCTV cameras, investigate suspect's trace, and determine the activity range to locate the CCTV cameras that may have captured the crime scene. Now pay attention to the blind spots of the crime scene. Uh, in, case, in, uh, in case the crime scene took place at these blind spots, we must locate the cameras watching over the passages leading to these blind, blind spots. It is also important to learn about the features and different cameras uh, because sometimes it may help to find a bridge point. Follow the leads and find the DVR through the cameras. Set priorities if multiple DVRs are found in the crime scene and pay attention to stop the DVRs to prevent recording new videos to overwrite valuable surveillance videos. Uh, but if you are not able to stop the DVRs, always consider to prior to extracting data from the DVR system with short recording cycles. Now step two, secure storage medium. Locate the storage medium. Usually the storage medium is inside, is in so installed inside the DVR device, uh, but of course there are so also external storage method. For example, large surveillance systems usually use storage er server or RAID to keep the data. Actually, in most of the cases, uh, DVR devices use hard disk drive to be the storage medium. In a case of external storage, data extraction must be carried out in the presence of professionals because uh, RAID is a rather complicated storage system and must be handled with care. Now step three, DVR recording cycle check. Check the reservation time of existing video files or check the system settings. Ask related personnel or check system log. Step four, time calibration. Um, the time settings in the DVR system are sometimes not accurate. Therefore, time calibration is crucial during our extraction process. Uh, this helps the investigator to 
accurately locate the, the video footage. And how can we do time calibration? Uh, we can check the standard time when extracting videos and keep a record of the time variance. A step five, DVR system ch status check. Normally, all DVR systems uh, keep a detailed uh, log of the operation history and system status. By checking the system log, we can acquire much useful information to help us understand the status of the system or the video we are looking for. Uh, for, for example, uh, by checking the log, we can know when the DVR was powered up and off. So we will know if surveillance videos were actually recorded during a specific time period. And also here, I want to remind you guys that VIP will add a log analysis feature very soon. Uh, this means that the system then will help you to automatically analyze the DVR system log. Chapter two, video data status. So, okay, now that we have known the things to take notice in a field investigation, uh, let's continue. This part is really important. I will show you what are the different video data status and how do we extract such video data. We can divide different video data status into four categories. They, they are normal video data, deleted video data, lost video data, and fragmented video data. First, normal video data. Uh, this is most easy to understand. All the video files that can be directly accessed by a DVR system are called normal video data. And we can extract such data by analyzing the file allocation table, check the allocated data area, and retrieve the video files. And next is deleted video data. Uh, the, the videos that are deliberately or mistakenly deleted by someone are called deleted video data. Uh, in a file system level, deleted video data is actually very similar to normal video data. It is just marked as deleted by the file system. And the real data is still there until new video files overwrite it. And we can extract such video data by analyzing the file allocation table, check the allocated data area, and retrieve the video data. And next is lost video data. Uh, first, let's take a look at two very important concepts, allocated data area and unallocated data area. Now let's take a computer hard disk, for example. Uh, when a brand new hard disk is made, all its capacity is unallocated until users make some partitions out of it. Uh, these partitions are called allocated area, data areas and others are called unallocated data area. So allocated data area has a healthy file system structure and operating system can access normal files through the file directory. But unallocated data area has no file, healthy file system structure. Operating system cannot access data in this area. Uh, files can only be recovered through a sector-by-sector -sector scan with professional recovery tools. So video files that somehow end up in the unallocated data area are called lost video data. They are usually caused by uh, sudden power off of DVR device, file system corruption such as partition lost, uh, mistakenly disk initialization, and mistakenly partition format. And such video data can be uh, recovered by analyzing the file allocation table, check the unallocated data area, read the data and check for valid video files, then retrieve the data according to the corresponding video data structure. And now let's see a simple demonstration of how VIP can recover lost video data. Here we can go to the, now let's go to the VIP uh, system interface now, because scanning for the 
uh, video files could take a while, so I made a scan uh, in advance. This is what what we are seeing now is the scanning result of a uh, image file. This image file is created from a formatted DVR file system uh, because the disk is formatted, so most of its file directories are lost. And now let's see what we have recovered in this uh, image file. Here we can see the file type. This column here it shows is the file the the data type of this video clip. We can see here are uh, a lot of lost video files. Almost all of the files we recovered are lost because this partition is uh, formatted. So deep scan of VIP system is designed for the situation that your uh, partition of the image file has been formatted. So this way we can use a deep scan to recover the video files. Okay, now before we continue, please allow me to load another image file and we can scan it in advance to save time before we continue to the next part. And this time I will use a fragment scan. Let's wait for the process to complete and later we'll see what we can recover. Okay, so now let's continue. The last one, fragmented video data. So what is fragmented video data? Generally, when a video file is overwritten, sometimes some small fragmented data will still remain. Uh, with salvation data, I have a kind of special technology to recover and reassemble such video data and we call it fragmented video data. Now let's uh, take a 10 channels DVR system with one capacity, for example. If it records 10 GB video data for each channel and it will be 100 GB for every day. So obviously after 10 days, the DVR reaches max maximum capacity and starts from the 11th day it overrides old video files and this is when fragmented video data emerges. So why are we able to recover the overwritten video data? Let's see an example. Uh, because video, video data is stored in a unit of, of blocks and the size of uh, data blocks is fixed. Let's say that this, uh, this white block here is a data block just as the picture shows, when a new video file overrides an old video file, the data of the old video is not necessarily completely overwritten. So with our special technology, we can recover what's left of the overwritten video file. The fragmented video data is recovered by analyzing the file allocation table, find the occupied data blocks, uh, read the read and analyze if there is valid data in the unoccupied sectors of, uh, of these data blocks. If so, extract those data according to the corresponding video data structure. Okay, now let's see the demonstration. Let's, let's see what we have recovered with a fragment scan. Let's check the scanning results. Here are the video files sorted by time you can see these are all the video files of April 20th and here they are sorted by ch different channels channel 1 channel 2 and channel 3 we can see now what we have recovered through fragment scan these video files are very small you can see this video file has only 800 uh, KB if we preview this video we can find this that this video clip has only 12 seconds to play this is a very small video clip. Uh, this is what's left of a overwritten video file. So with this, with our special technology, the fragment scan, we can absolutely recover a lot, a lot more overwritten video files than other recovery tools. Okay. Now let's get back. And finally, let's see the summary. How to identify the video data status. Confirm the time period when 
when the time when the crime scene took place, remember time calibration. Confirm the recording cycle time and check the DVR system log. Videos within the recording cycle might be normal data, but if the data is not found in the storage media, it is possibly deleted or lost due to specific reasons. Check this log of to make sure that uh, the DVR system is functioning and recording during that time period. Videos beyond the recording cycle might be partially or completely overwritten. Chapter 3, DVR data extraction. So in this chapter, let's talk, take a look at uh, the typical uh, video data extraction methods and how does a forensic system work to retrieve video clips. Here are some ways to extract video videos from a DVR. Uh, they are screen filming, USB extraction, network extraction, and use professional forensic system. Screen filming is to use a filming device to directly record video from a surveillance screen. This is a very simple method. And obviously, in order to film the videos, they must be normal, accessible videos. So deleted or lost videos cannot be extracted this way. USB extraction is to use a removable USB device to extract video data from a DVR device. Also, only normal video clips are accessible in this way. And network extraction. Uh, most DVRs have a web console that allows PC to access their system with local network connection. So we can also retrieve videos with network extraction. And finally, we can use professional forensic system to do the job. A professional DVR forensic system such as VIP uh, provides both disk extraction and network extraction solutions. And compared with traditional extraction methods, using a forensic system has many great advantages. Um, by using traditional extraction methods, the DVR device must be working. If the DVR device is broken, it will be a re real headache. And the DVR password is required in order to get access to its system. And also, different DVRs have different system UI, which is really upsetting for video investigators. And most importantly, only normal video data is extractable without the help of professional forensic system. So what advantages does DVR forensic system such as VIP has? First, uh, you don't need a working DVR device. If somehow the DVR is broken, video data can be directly extracted from the storage medium. And you can bypass the DVR password because the DVR device is not even needed. And you don't have to navigate through different system UI. You only have to know the DVR forensic systems interface. Most importantly, with special data recovery technology, we can uh, have access to more uh, normal, deleted, lost, and even overwritten video data. Now let's see how does a forensic system work to analyze a DVR file system and retrieve video clips. This is an example of a hack vision DVR file system. What you are seeing now is the base level hex data view of a hack vision file system. And this is the DVR of the file system. In this page, we can see the file system signature of this hack vision file system at the beginning of the sector. Uh, this is how the forensic system determines, identifies uh, what file system this disk has. We can see the file system here. It is the high vision file system. And then we go to the high B tree. Here we can know where the file allocation table is. Then the system will jump to the file allocation table. And by analyzing the file allocation table, the system will know where the data blocks are. And in other words, uh, where the video files are, are stored. 
So next, the system will jump to the beginnings of these data blocks. At the end of the, at the head of these data blocks, there are many useful information of the video clips, such as uh, the channel, the start and end time of the videos. And finally, the system goes to the actual location of the video data and extract them as video clips to allow users to get access. So as we can see, this is really a complicated process. It takes a lot of professional knowledge and experience if someone wants to manually analyze uh, and extract video data from a DVR file system. But it takes only an automatic scanning process with a professional DVR forensic system. So any investigators can easily extract valuable video data with just a little practice. Chapter four, case study. So let's, next, let's see a real DVR forensic case that we dealt with before to see how, a, how the VIP system helps with a DVR forensic case. This is the case introduction. Uh, in 2014, uh, April 19th, a murder case took place in a supermarket. The police found DVR system in a supermarket, but the DVR device and the storage disk are, are missing. The suspects may have taken the device, according to the victim's family. Two suspects were captured after two days investigation. Suspect A claimed that he was just on the lookout while the suspect B claimed both of them were involved in the murdering action. So the surveillance video became the key to the, invest in the, to the investigation. Then the police found the missing storage disk at the bottom of a lake with the help of the suspects. The disk was flooded and the DVR was completely broken. So the police turned to professionals for help. Um, so let's see what difficulties were met by the investigators and how did they solve it with the help of professional DVR forensic technology. So we are going to introduce this uh, case to you in a standard forens digital forensic process. Uh, fortunately, the DVR storage disk was successfully found with the help of the suspect, but with the DVR broken and the HDD flooded. How can investigators extract valuable video data? Uh, so they turn to professional DVR forensic solution provider. The first step should be to diagnose the storage disk and determine whether repair is needed and how to extract data from it. With preliminary diagnostics of the disk, its components are intact, but because it was flooded, it must be carefully and completely dried before it can be powered up. So the disk was opened in a dust-free environment and dried carefully. Now with the storage disk repaired, the next step is to secure evidentiary data by imaging. Because in a standard forensic process, it is forbidden to operate directly on the original storage medium. So the investigators next used the forensic system to secure evidentiary data by forensic imaging. Forensic imaging is to create an exact sector level duplicate of the original storage medium. Now with the image created, the next step is data analysis. The video files were successfully extracted directly from the DVR storage disk with the help of VIP system. So the investigators started their analysis. Uh, they first checked all the normal status video clips, but cannot find video clips of the crime scene. Now let's th think about it. What could have happened to the video clips of the crime scene? Here are some clues. The CCTV camera overwatched the passage leading to the DVR device. The suspects took the DVR device when they left. And according to the system log, uh, the DVR was not powered off when the crime took place. So we can come to the conclusion, the video clip of the crime scene could, could be deleted by the suspect or accidentally lost by some reason. 
so the key video clip was somehow inaccessible. After analysis, the professional told the investigators that because the DVR was suddenly powered off uh, when the super when the suspect took it, the latest video clips uh, were not saved to the data area but in the cache area. So they used a deep scan with the VIP system and finally found the video clip of the crime scene. These are the recovered video clips that directly captured the crime scene. So these are direct evidence proving that both suspects were involved in the murder action. So the key evidence was successfully found and now one last very important step is to generate a forensic report which is also one very important feature of a digital forensic system. Uh, the purpose of a forensic report is to strictly document the whole forensic process so that uh, the evidence can be traced all the way back to the original data source, thus making it valid at, as legal digital evidence. So as we can see, uh, VIP is an integrated DVR forensic system providing inv investigators with important features such as forensic imaging, video acquisition, video data and re recovery, forensic report, and many other useful functions to help make a DVR forensic case easy. Okay, so in the next part, I will show you some simple demonstration and the introduction of the VIP system. Now let's go to VIP's interface. This is the VIP video investigation protocols homepage. Here we can see all the main function modules are divided into three different categories. They are on the left, video extraction and recovery. And in the middle, video play and last, video, anal video analyze. So let's check them one by one. First, disk imaging. This is usually the first step in a digital forensic case. This imaging module is very simple to operate. Your first step is to select a data source. Next, select a disk imaging target and check the hash calculation, math, uh, hash calculation algorithm MD5 or SHA1. And here's another option, erase target disk. If you check this one, the target disk's original data will be erased to avoid irrelevant interference. And also we provide great flexibility in the data source selection. You can select to image the whole disk or a single partition or some customized sector Uh, for example, I can make this image data source small so that we can save time. And I can give you a demonstration. Now I, I choose to save this image as an image file on my desktop. And press start to start the process. Now the image is complete. Once the image is complete, we can press report to generate an image report and save anywhere you want, press confirm to end the process. So this is the imaging. And once we have finished creating the imaging, we can go to disk extraction to analyze what we have uh, recovered. For example, let's do a quick scan with this image file. So basically, with quick scan and deep scan and fragment scan, they provide uh, different options to give you uh, different time period to scan the, uh, the image file. Quick scan, quick scan will give you the result most quickly, and, but, but it has only can really only recover normal video clips and uh, deleted video clips.
Sorry, just a minute. Okay, now the scanning has complete. We can see what we have recovered in this image file. We can, we can view them by a list here. We can preview the videos by pressing the playing icon. And we can select the videos by click on the videos. Press select all to select all the videos. And press filter to set the filters. For example, uh, if I choose overwritten, the system will filter all the overwritten video files. And choose the videos you want to extract. And press extract. This will save the video files to your uh, current selected case. And also you can you can also save the video files to your uh, customized local destination by pressing this export to folder to specify a location to save this video file. And once you have finished all the process, you can press report to generate a forensic report. Okay, now let's see the report. So the report file will give you information of the case information you input, uh, the data source information, the scanning information, extraction information, and also uh, an operation log at the end. Okay, so this is disk, disk extraction. And also uh, here we provided a network extraction. There's another video extraction option here. This is designed for the situation where uh, you do not have access to the DVR storage disk. Maybe sometimes you cannot remove the storage disk from the DVR system. So this function here will give you access to the DVR system with local network connection. If your PC is connect connected to the DVR system with a local network, you can extract, you can download videos with this module here. Here we have standard scan, direct connection scan, and menu scan, three scanning options. Now let's try a standard scan. By pressing standard scan, the VIP system will automatically scan the DVR systems connected to the current local network. Uh, this could take a while, but if you know the IP address of the DVRs, you can manually add the DVRs device. Like this. First, you have in, you have to input a DVR vendor, and then you type in the IP address of this DVR and press add. Now we can connect to this DVR device. Sorry, I used. Hello. Do we lost connection? Oh, sorry guys, just a minute. Can you guys still hear me? Sorry, just a minute.
Okay, sorry for the interruption. Uh, I think we got the audio back. So let's continue. Now we have connected to the DVR device through local network connection. And the ne next thing to do is to set a filter. Let's see what happened, what we recorded. Start from yesterday and till today. Press confirm to confirm the filter settings. Now the system will scan all the videos that have met your filter settings. Okay, this is similar as the disk extraction. We can view all the video clips that, are, that were scanned uh, from this DVR device. We can preview these video clips and we can press uh, to select these video clips and extract them to our local storage device. And also we can press here to select all, press the filter to set the filters again. Okay, so this is the extraction functions. Now with the videos extracted to our local storage, now we can use the outro player to play the videos. This is also integrated with the disk extraction and network extraction as we just saw the preview functions. This is a very powerful video player supporting most of the DVR video formats that we have known. You can select the video source by uh, playing history here or to navigate it through your local storage to find the video clips or from a case video resource. And even sometimes if you cannot even play the videos with this outro player, you can press here OVIT player. This will pop up a independent video player. This is uh, the OVIT player, player has even more powerful support for more uh, kind of for more different video formats. And also here we have outro transcode. This function here will help you to transcode the DVR video formats into AVI format to allow normal video players to play the videos. First we need to add uh, a video clip. Oh, sorry, it's already transcoded. Let's add another one. So press this video to select it and press the transcode button button to begin the transcoding process. Okay. And one last function here is the video video retrieval. Now let's play a demo video here. Sorry, just a minute. So as we can see the time bar here, you may have noticed that there are, there are two different colors uh, on this time bar. The gray section indicates that there are no uh, movements inside this area, inside this time period. But the yellow area indicates that there are some suspicious movements marked by the VIP system. So it is telling you to pay attention to this uh, video clip. So generally, the video retrieval function can help you to save a lot of time watching over through the entire video clips. And also we can set some specific rules to even filter the video clips with more strict uh, rules. For example, if I choose a red filter, the system will find all the red objects that have been marked in this system like this all the red objects that have moved past the screen will be shown here. And we can also draw a tripwire here. This will show all the objects that have moved past this tripwire.
Okay, so this is basically the uh, a simple demonstration and introduction of our VIP system. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave your questions at the webinars console, and I will see if I can give you the answer answers. So now let's go to the QA session. Now it's time for to check the questions. Okay, so our first question, what image file types are supported as input for VIP? Uh, currently, all the, all the raw image files such as DD or IMG, all the raw image files are supported and such as DD image, IMG and VHD, these kind of uh, raw image types were supported to, for in VIP system. And in the next, update we will bring more supports uh, we will bring more supports like uh, e e01 and af1 okay so this is the first question and let's see another question the network extraction does it support deleted videos on no no so here, here's something I need need you guys to know that um, in the network extraction, only normal video files were extractable because uh, because this function is getting access to the DVR system and uh, ask the DVR system to retrieve video files. So any videos that cannot be accessed by the DVR system are not retrievable with the network connection. Uh, so if you want to recover deleted or lost or overwritten video files, you will have to remove the disk from the DVR and connect it directly to your computer and use disk extraction to do the recovery. Okay, so another question. Uh, here's another question. Please let me know if the video retrieval part is possible for all DVRs or for particular DVRs having facility of motion detection. Um, no, the Video retrieval function here theoretically supports all the video file, all the video formats that VIP supports. So there is no, uh, it, this is not dependent on the DVR brand. This is to say if our VIP system can support to play that video format, we can do the video retrieval with it. Okay, let's see another question. Another question is, uh, how many DVR brands do you support? So this is uh, one of the most frequently asked question by our customer. Um, Actually, I cannot give you an exact number of how many DVR brands do we support because, because uh, you must understand this, that uh, whether a DVR brand is supported, is, this depends on the file system. Actually, many, uh, there are many DVR brands that share the very similar and even the same file system, so we do not know for sure how many DVR brands do we support, but if you are really interested in the uh, supporting situation, you can contact us. You can contact our sales or our support personnel for a file system support list. 
Actually, we have a file system support list on our website. Um, and actually, what we do know is that because we are a Chinese brand, a Chinese, uh, brand so most of the, as we know, most of the Chinese uh, brand DVR systems were supported in VIP already. But if you really encounter some file system that is not supported in a VIP system, you can contact us, give us the uh, information, and we can make a schedule to support that file system. And another question, can we get the recording of this webinar session as it is being recorded? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, this webinar is recorded and we will send you, we will follow up to send you the recording of this session. You can review the webinar anytime you want. Okay, so let's go to another question. Um, can can you recover data if a DVR is damaged but like burned by fire? Mm, the VIP can deal with the situation that DVR device is somehow damaged, but at least the storage drive must not have ser serious damage. For example, if a DVR is burned by fire, we can recover the data if the damage is limited to the surface of the DVR storage di disk. Uh, but if the platters are with good condition, we can use uh, Salvation Data's HP Pro to do the physical repair first and then do the data recovery. Uh, but if even the platters were, uh, were burned, there is nothing we can do about it and not anyone can deal with a situation like this. Okay. And another question, can more file signatures be added? Absolutely, as I just mentioned, uh, if you found any uh, File, file system that is not supported by the current version of the VIP system, please do let us know. You can contact us, give us in the information what the file system is, uh, what the DVR brand is, and we will consider adding it uh, to our schedule to make, it, make, our, make uh, the VIP system to support that file system. Okay, guys, because the time is limited, so I cannot ask, I cannot answer all of your questions. If you still want to uh, ask your questions, you can con contact us directly uh, later by email or by Skype or anything else. So I would like to th thank you very much for joining us in this webinar, and we, as promised, we will. Uh, give away one lifelong VIP license to one of you uh, randomly. So we, later we will follow an email to the to the to the people who have won this uh, license. Okay, so thank you so much for attending this webinar. Uh, we, I wish to to see you guys very soon. Jimmy